Every time I show a demo of an agentic AI application, the most common question that I get asked is, this application is not even generating anything. So how can this be a generative AI application? And that's true. Agentic AI and generative AI applications are completely different. And probably the most common reason for the source of confusion is because both of them use a large language model under the hood. But that's probably the only similarity between the two. Now in this video, I'm going to show you what's the difference between agentic AI and generative AI. Before we get into the differences, please note that this video is part of my amazing new course on Amazon Bedrock Agents. Now let's start with what is the focus of both. For generative AI, the focus is on content generation. So whether you want to generate text, images, code, you will use generative AI. But the focus area for agentic AI is to execute complex tasks autonomously with minimal human intervention. Now let's try and understand this through a use case. So let's say you have a human developer and you want to improve his productivity. So what you will do is you will build a generative AI application such as a code generator through which it can generate code from a natural language query. Now let's assume there's a production defect and he analyzes the issue and then poses a query to the generative AI app to generate some code for it so that he can fix the defect. So it will generate the code, he will implement the code and test the code and then it will be good. So it has improved his productivity. Now let's take the same use case on how it will be implemented through the agentic AI. So here you will build a developer agent and you will not require human intervention or at least you will require minimal human intervention. So what this developer agent will do is so it will evaluate the logs and understand what the defect is. Then based on the evaluation of the logs, it will generate code. It will update the code, test it out and implement it. So it will do everything by itself and would not require the human intervention. Maybe you can keep the human in loop at the end. Once the code has been generated, updated, tested, then just before the implementation, you can have a human in loop who will review and then implement. Next, generative AI can also act as a productivity enhancer. So maybe you will have a generative AI application that can do the content creation such as press briefings, creation of videos, brochures for the marketing team. On the other hand, for agentic AI, a great use case would be a customer service chatbot that can answer the complex user queries by understanding the user queries and then retrieving the relevant data from relational, non-relational or rag based solutions and give a response back to the end user. Now let's take a look at the capabilities and limitation of generative AI and agentic AI. So the probably the only similarity between generative AI and agentic AI is that they are both powered by a large language model. So you could have Claude, Llama 3, OpenAI or any other LLM. Next, generative AI is limited to the training data of the LLM. So whatever data the LLM has been trained on, it can answer questions only related to its training data. It also does not have access to real-time data or enterprise data. So let's say for LLM, the training was completed on June 2023. So any event happening after that date, the LLM would not be able to answer those questions. So it cannot also tell you what is the weather like today in New York because it has no access to real time or enterprise data. On the other hand, agentic AI can integrate with enterprise data sources, relational, non-relational, vector DB. It can also access real time data such as weather data, hotel booking, flight booking because it can integrate with tools that can make an API call to the backend systems and get you the real time or enterprise data. Then large language models are stateless. They have no memory. So you can enable memory in a generative AI applications, maybe through Langchain where you can enable conversation buffer memory, but by default, it does not have any memory. While as in the agentic AI, you will have a long term and short term memory to contextualize and personalize the response to the user. Generative AI also does not have any reasoning capability through which it can break down the user request into 
multiple tasks. Well, as that capability is available with the agentic AI where it will evaluate the user request and break it down into smaller subtasks using the large language model. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a common architecture for generative AI based application. So you'll have a front end through which the user would send his queries. Then maybe you will have a REST API, maybe a Lambda function, and then Amazon Bedrock and some underlying foundation model. Now in case of agentic AI, you will have a large language model that will be driving the agent. Then it will have some tools, let's say Lambda function, maybe knowledge bases, which will query the backend systems and get the data for the HR agent. It will have a memory to contextualize and personalize the responses. It will have some guardrails. Then if you're also building multi-agent applications, you will need a orchestration framework such as Amazon Bedrock multi-agent, orchestration framework, Langgraph, Crew AI, and so on. So how would a typical generative AI application work? So let's say you have a user who is trying to generate some content. He will send that request or prompt via AWS API gateway to a Lambda function. And then this Lambda function is going to enhance the user input with a prompt template and then send that request to Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Bedrock will further send that request to a foundation model. Then it will generate a response and send it back to the user. So in case of agentic application, how would that work? So you'll have a user that will send that request to an agent, then agent is going to break down the user task into multiple steps. And then it will use the tools that it has, maybe a Lambda function, maybe a bedrock knowledge base to retrieve the data from the backend. And once it gets a response back from these backend systems, it's going to consolidate that input and send it back to the user. So this is some key differences between generative AI and agentic AI. Please note that this video is part of my amazing new course on Amazon Bedrock agents and AWS AI agents. If you're looking to learn about Amazon Bedrock, Amazon Q, then you can also take a look at my other course, which already has almost 15,000 subscribers. And if you're just simply looking to pass the AWS AI practitioner certification, take a look at my certification course and the details about these Udemy courses and discount coupon links are in the description below.